The Catholics of Oz is brought to you by the StarQuest Production Network and is made possible by our many generous patrons. If you'd like to support the podcast, please visit sqpn.com slash give. You're listening to episode 46 of The Catholics of Oz. The Catholics of Oz is a show where we discuss faith, culture, and what's been happening from an Aussie perspective. Whether it's synods or science, apostolates and apps, providence or productivity, you can hear it right now on The Catholics of Oz. Hello, I'm Lindsay Sands and welcome to episode 46 of The Catholics of Oz. It's very happy to uh, have you all with us and to be joining you to um, share another episode with you all the way from Australia. And I'm joined again, as always, by my wonderful, lovely, all the adjectives that I've used from this year to describe her, my <laughs> sister, Caroline Knight. Caroline, how are you going? Oh, you're such a flatterer. I'm, I'm well, thanks. How are you, Lindsay? I'm good. It's because we're visiting your house later, so I want to make yes, sure we get very like, you know, good lunch. Yeah, yep. Very exciting. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yep. Got to up. be in my good books for it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you know what? Uh, we haven't, you and I at least, I know that Isabel saw you in between lockdowns, but I haven't yeah. seen you since the start of the year, basically. Like, no, this will be... it's been so long. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah. yeah, my kids are excited to see their cousins as well. So Yeah, that would be good. Be great. Did you miss me? Yeah. Mm, what? Sort of. Yeah, it took a while to respond. I'm just... yeah. <laughs> okay, yes. All right. Well, I'm going to get rid of the awkwardness by introducing. <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> uh, welcoming back, I should say. We missed you last week, Lido. So, yes. Lido, welcome back to uh, the Catholics of Oz. How have you been? Oh, it's been great, guys. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I I had to work last weekend. Uh, we were like three days behind a backlog and we had to be done. And yeah. um, it was worth it, you know, getting everything done. But I miss being a podcast with you guys. It's been great. Yeah, I we missed it been too. two more episodes, guys. Is this our second last one or the next one the last one? Yes, I think for the year, this Gosh. will be our second last one. Yeah, so uh, t- two more flown. episodes for 2020. Yeah. Yep. yeah then we'll have a bit a of a Christmas yeah. break. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. And it's yeah. like you guys, you guys are going to see each other. Then it's going to be a Maltese meeting, oh, like totally. hello, and it's very loud, or it's going to be just like oh, my brother and sister is going to see each other. And... I don't no, know. We're loud. Uh, yeah, well, uh, we can we can be loud. We can talk like Maltese people. Like, hey, I don't know. But they I'm a bit tired today. To be quiet. Yeah, no, we're not necessarily quiet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm tired too, worse. but doesn't get yeah. me. In, doesn't stop yeah. me from being loud. Oh, True. Of course, of course, it gets of course. worse. The more stance you have in a house, the, the louder it does get. Yeah, and then yeah. Marilyn, our sister, is coming yeah. over. Oh, and yeah. Mum's going to pop That's over. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. Yes. Mum wants to drop in. Surprise, yeah, I forgot to tell you that. And um, no, no, probably no, Dad will me. pop over. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so because yeah. they live next door. So yeah, you might be a uh, yeah yeah. You're in a bit of a almost in a everybody loves Raymond situation. Totally am, and I love yeah. it. So it's awesome. Yeah. Everyone loves yeah. Caroline. He's her thing. Yeah, yeah. That's it. it's my show. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> when life imitates art, yes. Uh, yeah. Or comedy, even better. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Cool, cool. All right. Anyway. So uh, let's, yeah, let's roll on. I just want to remind everyone, please, uh, to remember to like the Catholics of Oz on the SQPN Facebook page when our episodes uh, are posted. You can retweet and share our episodes on Twitter. And you can leave us comments as well on any of those platforms. We uh, we love to hear comments. We had a few uh, comments on our Catholics of Oz Facebook page, which was, which was really nice. So um, thank you for those comments. They were, they were wonderful. Um, also, don't forget to subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, on Google Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, or your favorite podcast app. All the episodes of the Catholics of Oz and the other SQPN shows are also up on YouTube. Just search SQPN and find the YouTube channel. Subscribe to it, hit the bell so you get notifications for when new episodes come out so you uh, you can catch uh, everything that we produce. Also, you can leave us feedback on iTunes and other podcast directories. And this is really good for us because when you do that, the algorithms say, hey, everyone's listening to uh, the Catholics of Oz. You should listen to it too. That's, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, that's what everyone's thinking, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, of course. Of course. Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the reason really, uh, you know, we're not out for any popularity. We just want to connect with people. That's what we're all about. And, um, you know, so hearing from you and, uh, and being able to share our ideas with you, I always say that this is a two-way podcast, even though we're the ones doing the talking and maybe you're the one doing the listening, but we always invite a response and we always love to have a discussion. So there we go. Uh, why don't we get started? Um, again, we are, I think we've just decided for 2020, we're going to leave the casual format going. <laughs> so, and then we'll get back to, uh, <laughs> 
to being a bit more organized <laughs> next year. <laughs> we're uh, we're a bit we're a bit COVID weary, I think, aren't we? We've uh, yeah. we've, we've copped a bit of a uh, a bit of a thrashing with all these yeah. lockdowns and everything. Oh, it was, so it, it been, was hard it work. Been. It really was. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But yeah. we've got zero, zero, zero cases, zero community transitions, zero anyone sick at the moment, which is yeah. fantastic news. Yeah, Lots of donuts. Fantastic, totally. Yeah. All yeah. the donuts. Yeah. How many, how many yeah. days is it again, Caroline? How many 20, donuts? This will be 29, donuts. Day, 29, 29 today. 29, 29 donuts. days free. So what an Gosh. achievement. That's, That's great. great. Yeah. That's great. The, the lockdown's really helped. Recording. Yep, yep. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. And all the mask yeah, all wearing the that we still have mask, to do. Lockdown, but... mask wearing, yep, social yeah. distancing, it's all uh, hand sanitizing. It really does help, yeah, yeah all of it's, it. Um, it's made the difference. It's a hard slog, but it, it, um, it's it got hard, us there. But yeah, it, yeah, yeah exactly. that's right. Exactly. We all, like, a testament to everybody sticking together. It was yeah. really hard, but our whole state really did the hard yards and um, we got there together. Isn't that cool? Like when you really, yeah. you know, make an effort to stick together and do it, what yep. what you can achieve? What, yeah, definitely. What a great yeah. thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's, and, uh, as long as we keep on going with it, guys. And um, yeah, you know, well, that's the also, thing now. You know, look, look, it's done. It's happened to New Zealand as well. And it, what happened to South Australia? Yeah, you know, you, it's not eradicated. Like that, that's what I say in the media. It's still out there. But if mm. we keep our routines, our um, sanitation, um, you know, all the things we're doing now. A mask wearing and all that stuff. We can, I think we'll, we'll do well. We'll do well. You know, I think this social distancing and masks, I believe, will be still here for the next year. No, oh, sadly, sure. I, I sadly yeah. it will be like that. But yeah. our restrictions and our lockdowns are gone. And it, it's just, it always comes to the common sense side of it, then, yeah. guys. And I think we, we Victorians, have uh, done very well. And it, I think we, we, we've done the longest ever off of, of Australia. Oh, I, yeah, for yeah, Australia for yeah. sure. Exactly. Oh, by miles, and, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And we have yeah. to definitely say a prayer and and um, and um have thoughts for the other countries as well. Yes. And yeah. Yeah, there, there's yeah. some people are still locked down. I don't know, uh, sorry, Lindsay, but um, mm-hmm. um Caroline, Christine mm-hmm. sent me a friend request through Facebook. Now, her, Christine, <clears throat> sorry, Christine we know is Christine Devonport. Oh my goodness! Yeah, <laughs> she sent school. me the oh, wait, wait, special Christine. mention on the podcast. Exactly, and she lives. <laughs> yes, yeah. sorry guys. And then, and then, hey Christine, if you listen to the podcast, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all the way in Bahrain. She was she she lives in Bahrain with her with her husband and Does she? daughters. No kidding. Yeah, they're in lock. They're in lockdown, wow. and yeah, right. she's oh, there. There's sort of a lot of um. Uh, think, her dad oh, goes so, to our church, doesn't he? Exactly. He's uh, yeah. you, know, you know, for the life of me, I never knew his name. No, Until but we know it, it's he knows his name now is Malcolm. You know, and Malcolm. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Hey, hey, he hey, reads hey, now. Yeah. yeah, Malcolm. He reads, he reads at church. church. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there you okay. go. Uh, yeah, uh, hey, Malcolm. Yeah. Malcolm goes. Hey, Lido. Okay, good night, mate. I never knew his name. Oh, there <laughs> you one go. of those embarrassing things that you don't know, who yeah. anyway, even though you know the um, the the daughter and or the close friend. There you of go. Him. Shout out to the Davenport. Yeah, shout out to them. That's right. Yeah, it is true. It's true. So you just well, we just keep have to keep on playing for the other countries because even yeah. though we're doing well and we have to keep on going to this, there's a lot of struggle and especially in America, especially yeah. in America. They're, yeah, they're really we pray for them. That. They're struggling yeah. in many ways, it seems. So exactly, exactly. Our thoughts so, and prayers with them. Exactly. So I think yeah. we can have a how do you say a pat on the back. But hey, you can do it. You can do it. <laughs> And for those who can't you know, see, Lino's trying to pat himself on yeah, the back of the yeah. neck. Yeah. Yeah. Just Ow. ask Bernadette sure. to do it for you later. <laughs> oh, no, sure. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Gently. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So, yeah. 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 Nah. Um, cool, yeah, cool, cool. yeah, like you said, Lino, we are definitely, you know, and we, Caroline and I, kind of, uh, we talked about this a little bit last episode as well. Mm. We're definitely praying for um, everyone around the world. So um, just because we happen to be in a good position now, doesn't mean that we're we're like you know yeah it's all about us you know we're, yeah. I mean we're really happy that well, um that we've reached where we are but um but we are definitely praying for the rest of the world and uh, you know we do watch with interest how other countries are going mm-hmm. uh, yes. and and just yeah. hoping that um that they can get through uh, whatever wave or whatever stage they're up to sometimes in different countries it's just state by state like we've got here as well or different regions yeah. or areas but um yeah we do hope for um we we hope you know for an end to this pandemic as soon as possible. Yeah, it was yeah. fun. It was fun. You know, we've we've had you know, learned our lessons, but you know, you, you can leave. You can leave now. Pandemic. We're we're done with you. Yeah, you can go now. Yeah, yeah. there's like um, said, there's some people a yeah. hundred years from now who would like the next one, not us. Oh, yeah, no. not us. I hope exactly, there wouldn't exactly. be another one ever. 
Yeah. yeah. Look, 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 the virus is, is out there still. It's just like we have to just use use like just common sense and make yeah. sure it doesn't come back. Yeah. You know, until, we, like Caroline would say with a few other um, episodes, that we, until we find a vaccine and we're able to take a shot and make sure we are immune to this, then then we've got to just keep on going with what we're doing now. Hey, eh? mm. absolutely. Yeah. So uh, let's um, let's do a quick whip around the panel. What's been going on in our lives? So it gives a gives mm. a spark notes version of what's of what's what was the latest. It's been two weeks since we podcasted. So Caroline, what's going yeah. on with you? Okay, so look, nothing really exciting, but for me it's exciting because I've been able to go out shopping, I've been able to go to cafes, I met up with my bestest friend in the world, Natasha, last week on Friday. Yeah, Yeah, she came over, we hadn't seen each other. She hasn't, I don't think I saw her since the end of last year. Wow. Um, So it was such a good catch up. Um, Awesome. Yeah, I, I've just been doing normal things, but like it's been so good and so freeing, you know. So, mm. um, you know, obviously there's my garden and the chickens, but I think everyone's sick of you <laughs> about those. Um, yeah, no. I think, um, I think some listeners know more about your garden and chickens than you do now. <laughs> uh, probably, probably. Um, yeah, my little seedlings are growing well. I'm very happy with that. Sweet. Um, Sweet. Yeah. So for me, it's just um, a return to normality, really. Mm, so yes, um, definitely, definitely. Yeah, that's been great. I'm just feeling really good about it, just being able to go. I'm the one thing I'm really glad about too is that we do have to wear masks, but now it's indoors and outdoors we don't have to wear them. So yes, yes, going for yep. walks without a mask on a hot day. Oh my god, oh, yes, good. Me. yes. <laughs> you know, I, so much I, better. I just yeah. totally understand. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. yeah, that's just hard work. Anyway, yeah, I don't really yeah. have much to report except <laughs> except I've just been back to normal, which is awesome. Great, um, yeah. Lino, what yeah. have you been up to? Uh, just, just, just the same, uh, just working. <laughs> just work. <laughs> you know, um, we went out for a cafe, we went to a cafe just locally, we were thinking of going out, but then time, you know how it is, guys, time just flies and you go, oh, okay, this is a bit too late. <laughs> just go local, just go local. We're about to go to Mornington or... Belgrave or something like that, but I thought, oh, we just go local, and it was great, you know. Um, and then hearing about this being coming to a normal, uh, normal way, it's oh, I was just like, yay! You know, yeah. you don't have to wear a mask everywhere. You know, yeah. you can you can always take it off in the car parks, not too bad. Of course, yeah. You know, social. I was talking about social distancing, blah blah blah. And all that stuff, but it was great. You what know, did Dan um, Andrew say? I liked how he put it. If you go to Bunnings, you're in the car park, yes, no mask. Yes, if yeah. you go to inside Bunnings, so put on your mask. If you're outside waiting for the sausage at the sausage <laughs> sizzle, wear a mask because you're in a crowded area. So it's like yeah. it really defined how and to wear a mask. Said, yeah. And then he said, uh, and by the way, the onions go on top of the sausage. Oh, that's right, the, yeah. Oh, on top, people. Okay. Yeah, it does in that, yeah, and for those who who have no idea what we're talking about, there was uh, so Bunnings is a, a big hardware chain it's the probably the biggest yeah it's probably it's almost a monopoly now like yeah, hardware yeah, yeah. like it's warehouses like a, full of you know hardware yeah. and plumbing and everything it's like, it's like, like Maccas so like you know Maccas is in every corner that we've got bunnies, yeah, yeah, bunnies every, every corner every, yeah every corner, they, they, um, that's how big they are yeah yes but one thing that's famous um all around Australia is that mm. um different groups at Bunnings uh you know chari- uh, you know lo- local groups scouts you, you know karate clubs sports clubs you name that's it right um great. they all yeah yeah they're able to um have a like a sausage sizzle, you know, selling sausages in in bread snags. I don't know. Yeah. What's what's the what's the American equivalent of a sausage sizzle? What would they call it? I don't know. I don't they know. have hot dogs. I bet it's not oh, quite okay, the no, same. Hot dogs is different. It's a though, piece yeah. of bread, not a hot dog yeah. bun. A hot dog is different. Yeah. It's like, barbie, yeah. Or it's, uh, We're talking like an actual beef sausage, just in yeah. a slice of bread with sauce with and sauce onions and onions on top. And you don't eat it from the middle. You eat it from the yeah, end. From just the end. to clarify, I don't eat it from the middle. Don't don't eat from the One politician tried that for his and lost the. Election, oh, and I he think lost just it on the back of that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was not good. No. Unforgivable. We're, there, you know, Jesus talks about the unforgivable sin, and I think that's what it is, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually, yeah, trying to eat your sausage sizzle sausage yeah. from the middle. Yeah. It's like, come yeah. on, dude, like, really? Yeah. Uh, but the point I'm trying to get to with that yeah, is, uh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> is that, no, it's all right. Um, but uh, so what happened was, uh, so people would have these sausage sizzles, and, you know, people would get their traditional sausage and bread with you know onion with sauce and then onions on top onions on top but unfortunately um a person uh had got had lined up um some onion had fallen out of a um <laughs> out of someone's um uh, what is it you know sausage like sizzle bread whatever you call it um okay. and onto the ground 
and a person slipped Uh-oh. on it, <laughs> oh. sued, sued Bunnings and won. Uh, and so Bunnings oh. put in a policy that from now on, whenever there's a sausage sizzle, the onions have to go underneath the sausage. And Australia went, was up in arms. We were so yeah. angry about this. Like, you over can't under, do that. It, well, how are you supposed to taste the sauce? Like, it, I, you can't yeah. have them together. And like, yeah. you know. Do you know I what the problem? Yeah. You know what I happens. I guess you can, but like, yeah. yeah, it's protocol. Yeah. But, you know, when we, the big mistake is that when Australia became a federation, they didn't put this onions on top in the constitution. No. And we've didn't. been suffering ever since. Yeah. yeah. It's terrible. The sausage can't possibly stick to the bread properly if there's no. onions in the way. Like, no. You're supposed yeah. to eat it and the onions fall out. That's just, that's natural. just normal. That's, that's, that's what happens. It. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Everything you put on top, isn't it, guys? You just put anything on top. Yeah, the stuff goes on top. You don't put under yeah. the sausage. Like sausage, The sausage no. has to stick to the bread so you yeah. know you've got it secure. Then yeah. you put your, your sauce and condiment, you know, condiments and whatever, like you can put onions, cheese, pickles, exactly. like, you exactly. know, pack it up, but bacon, like whatever you want. Whatever you want, mm, yeah. I'm so hungry wow. now. I oh, know. I was going to say, Caroline. <laughs> I'm going to go to oh, Bunnings like, after this. Go to Bunnings yeah, it's good. Yeah, it was, yeah, but I've got Bunnings down the road. I might just see if anyone's <laughs> having like, a sausage Literally, sizzle. it's just made me so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Oh, dear. Yeah, Sorry, well, everyone who's listening who I've just I don't know how we got to this topic, but all right, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, yeah, and then, uh, look, with me, uh, over the last two weeks, I've just been supremely busy with school. Um, my mm. So, at time of recording, um, my Year 12 Religion and Society class has an exam on Monday. So, oh, that wow. will be like six days, six days ago when this podcast comes out. So, December yeah, 30th. Man. Yeah, no, sorry, November 30th. What did I say? November 30th. Whoa. Not, not after Christmas. That, there's no school. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's come so yeah. far, man. <laughs> uh, but I have been getting slammed with, um, with practice imagine, questions. Dude. Oh, yeah. my goodness. No, yeah. Wow. Um, and so, especially in the last two weeks, I've been up till midnight and past midnight marking yeah. practice questions because, I mean, you know, they want to do well, which is fair enough. Um, but uh, yeah, so I've been, uh, I've been doing as much as I can to get. So, my policy has been for me personally is that when I get student work, I make sure I return it the day after um, yeah. so that because the problem is if I don't, it piles up like anything and I'll just be in this massive backlog. So True. Yeah. just on that, Lindsay, how are the kids? Yeah. Do you feel like there's a difference from like when you've been teaching in the past and difference to like them having gone through learning from home and, and all the rest? Do you think that they're a little bit more anxious this year maybe because they haven't uh. had that? Face to face, or do you think they're managing, or is it a mix? What do you reckon? Yes and no. It depends on yeah. on how the students handled remote learning. So there were mm. some that thrived, and so they've come back and they're just ready to, you know, because our exam started a month ago. So yeah, um, you know, the English wow. exam was the first one, you know, earlier um, this month. But um, I think that they, yeah, the ones who who were okay in remote learning uh, are okay with. I mean, apart from the usual exam, you know, anxiousness that you have. Um, maybe the ones who struggle in remote learning are probably finding it a bit more difficult. Mm. But, um, a bit more difficult. Yeah, yeah. but I've got yeah. to say, like, shout out to my colleagues. that They have loved their students um, so much and given everything they can. We, you know, our teachers are exhausted right now because we've just yeah, been, of course. we've done everything we can, I think, anyway, uh, to, do, to, to help our students get over the line and be as ready for these exams as, as we can. So, um, yeah. yeah, so I'll see my group on, I've got 15 students. I'll see them on Monday. Um, it's always tradition for me to um, to gather them together just before the exam. We say a prayer together. Oh, of course, uh, yeah, you know, um, yeah. Offer some advice. I always tell them when you walk in, don't be nervous. You don't need to be nervous. I said I'm going to go to my office now and I'm going to go and be nervous and and worried and anxious. <laughs> oh, that's wow. that's my job, you know. That's so nice. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I said that's my job. I said your job is to do as well as you can. No. Um, exactly. And as a joke, exactly. yeah, as a joke, I say you shouldn't be afraid of the exam paper. The exam paper is afraid of you. You should, you know, you're going to walk in with all this superior knowledge that you have and, and you're going to write all over it <laughs> and, uh, mm. and it's got no choice but to let you do that. You, it should be afraid of you, not the other way around. Wish told me that. Yeah. I know. Well, I must have known that sort of 90s, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They just let us fly. They just yeah, go. Out yeah. you go. Yeah, she go. Let's go. <laughs> Thanks for all the fish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, yeah, look, it's just been a really busy couple of weeks to me i haven't really been apart from friday nights with star trek discovery and the mandalorian oh, yeah. i haven't been watching mm. watching much tv um yeah. i did start season six of bosch a while ago thank you Dom. <laughs> <I also laughs> love but, yeah but i'm Yay! only about yeah i'm only about four episodes in but i, I am enjoying it a lot and I, I can't wait to watch more yeah 
cool. Yeah. And the other thing I did was, um, and I thank God for this, like literally thank God for this. Um, as a, a, that is a prayer that I've been saying a lot. Uh, I, I submitted my final essay for this year. Um, yes, congratulations. Yeah. So that, that was such Jeffrey. a relief. Yeah, yeah. We know so such a relief to get that done. Hard. Yeah, and I got a grade, thankfully. So now I don't have to worry about essay writing until next year. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Fantastic. So, you can have a yeah. break now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, um, not to boast, but um, because I'm the two other colleagues that I have in my office, we're all doing the same course together, and we all happen to get distinctions or or high distinctions for these essays, which is like we didn't expect it because we all thought we did. Like we honestly thought we did terribly because everyone was rushing to get their work done. So obviously we've gone through the process of you know reading, proof checking, Mm -hmm. whatever we've done all that, but it it doesn't feel like we've done it well. Yeah, if you put um, in the hard work, it's not a surprise. Yeah, is it? it. But um, yeah, I've walked into the office and I go, "Oh, it's hello, my two distinct gentlemen." I mean, yeah, it's it's a distinct pleasure to meet you. And uh, I like I like spending time with men of such high distinction. Oh no, it's just (laughs) dad jokerama. Yeah, (laughs) we we don't know when we're going to get good marks again, so we might as well milk it. You know, that's (laughs) true. I guess you're entitled to make those jokes. Yeah. And to all the dads out there, you joke, you dad joke whenever you want. Don't let no one, let no one tell you, you can't do that. <laughs> if they true. want to cringe, let that them is... cringe. The, the problem is them, not you. Let them... Uh, yeah. 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 And, and when you tell your dad joke, you laugh at it as well. You laugh at your joke like it's <laughs> the funniest no thing laughing, you've ever said. And it doesn't That's matter right. because yeah. you're laughing. That's yeah. right. You're entertained. You're happy. That's the key yeah. thing. If they don't laugh, they miss the joke. They have it's no a little similar to mum jokes, to be honest, because my kids... <laughs> You know how many eye rolls I've been seeing lately because oh, they're getting no. older. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't yeah. that there a saying, guys? What goes around comes around. Mm-hmm. Because our parents used to give us their jokes and yeah. go, "Oh, really, Dad? Will yeah. you, Mum?" Yeah. And now you, uh, we're doing it. I think we're slightly worse. It is. It's, it's, just, it's just like a sort of vicious, vicious circle. Yeah. <laughs> it goes yeah. around and around. Yeah. Yeah. I had a colleague um, the other day again in my office, um, and he was talking about how terrible the traffic was. And he goes, "He goes, how do you get to work, Lindsay?" I said, "In a car." <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, um, he wasn't pleased with that. Yeah, oh, I, I laughed. I thought it was funny, and he was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, funny. so uh, let's uh, let's do I'm some actual. You, uh, you can tell yeah. we're a bit relaxed now, guys. Yeah. Like you know, yeah, that's right. Oh, we're having a bit of a relax, bit of a relaxed one. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's uh, let's let's give the people some content, shall we? <laughs> let's yeah, give we what should. they came for. There is um, content coming. There is content. Let's start with one that uh, that's important to all Catholics um, and people of the Christian faith, and and you know by extension a lot of people around the world, and that is the we're on the journey towards Christmas now. Um, uh, so when this podcast comes out, it will be on the second Sunday of Advent. So happy, happy second Sunday. What is it? The candle. Of, I think the candle is love. Uh, yes. Oh, I can't remember. So yes. Oh, Pretty sure wow. it's hope, love. Joy love, and peace. Joy, peace. I love Frankie because he knows him. He's yes. like Advent expert. He loves it. Yeah. So the theme oh, of this awesome. Sunday is, is love, which is a beautiful one. Yeah. Um, yep. But let's let's go back to the first week, which for us the first Sunday of Advent, which is tomorrow. Um, and Advent, uh, you know, there, there's the typical explanation of Advent, which is um, we renew, we remember the hope and expectation of the coming of the Messiah. That's the Messiah. the biblical mm-hmm. um, uh, hope of of Advent, uh, the, the way we understand it. Uh, the Old Testament, there are a lot of places where um, it refers to, and especially in the Psalms, the, the hope for a Messiah, for, for God to come and, um, and you know, wipe away evil and, and, and bring in, usher in the kingdom of God. You know, there's, um, I'm paraphrasing the language very badly, but there's all that hope of, of basically of God coming in and taking away our, our ills you know, and, um, and bringing in his, you know, his kingship, becoming the king for everyone. Um, and if you read the Gospels, and I'll, show, I'll say something about the Gospels in a moment, uh, but if you read the Gospels, uh, there is, uh, especially in the Gospel of Mark, and I'm a bit biased towards it at the moment because it's been part of my, my that was what my essay was about. I, I ranted and raved about how great it was a couple of episodes ago. Yep. Uh, but yep. there was this expectation that when Jesus came and when people started figuring him out, that he was going to bring in an earthly kingdom, that, you know, the kingdom of God, were, you know, that when the Messiah comes, they're going to get rid of the Romans. Uh, oh. And mm. and Jesus mm. will take his place as, as a king, and then Israel will be this great kingdom ruled by God. God will be directly there, uh, you know, ruling the people, and no one will touch them ever again. And they'll be a powerful nation, and, uh, and that's that's mm. what they were kind of expecting. Um, but Jesus didn't come to bring in a temporal kingdom, a you know, a temporary kingdom. He exactly. uh, was proclaiming an eternal kingdom. It's something even better, a better product. Um, exactly. The problem is, mm. it must be 
you know, it must have been a source of frustration in, in some ways, at least early on for his followers, because uh, it must be hard for them to see it. I'm, I'm wondering, just reading um, mm. with all the misunderstanding they had, because they were thinking, but what about the Romans? You know, look, at, here we are. Mm. You know, yeah. um, and the people yeah. who read Mark's gospel, the, the actual, you know, the actual audience of Mark's gospel, you know, uh, decades after Jesus died, they were being persecuted by Nero yeah. Um, yeah. and, and mm. terrible stuff. You know, they were, they were the scapegoats for, um, for yeah. the fires of Rome, basically. Um, mm. And there mm. is some possible historical evidence that Nero was res- responsible, at least in part, for some of those fires because he wanted to set up some new building projects in, in Rome. So, uh, yeah, right. yeah, so, so let's, uh, let's scapegoat the Christians. That's basically what happened. And the Christians were under terrible wow. pressure because they were getting arrested uh, and being told, who are the other Christians that you know? Imagine how terrible th- this yeah. is, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, and, and that's, um, and so they're, they're being told, you know, stick with Jesus, stick with th- this eternal kingdom, but that's hard. You know, that's not, you know, mm-hmm. human experience tells it's hard. We, exactly. we want to, exactly. yeah. We want to keep our convictions. We want to, um, we want to hold on to God in every circumstance. But uh, we're we're also human as well, aren't we? And and we mm-hmm. fail. Um, and no greater failure do we see than Saint, than Saint Peter's failure when he says, "No, I'm going to stick with you through everything. I'm I'm there. I will do. I will follow you right to the end." And then when he's tested, he's like, "I don't know who you're talking about." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, really interesting on that note in in Mark's gospel that uh that. Jesus, um, he's, it, and I, I'm using air quotes here, no one can see those, but he, at, at his trial in Mark's gospel, he's basically forced to admit who he is, his identity. You know, yes, I'm, yeah. you know, I'm the son of God. I, you know, I am, you know, the son of God, mm-hmm. or I am mm-hmm. he. And you'll see, you'll see the son of man coming on, you know, on clouds, you know, to judge, you know, like judgment. So his identity is, here it is, I'm God in your midst. And the irony, of course, is that, that the Jewish leaders there who, are all about God, can't recognize, can't see God in their midst. And in exactly that, same, that moment, when Peter makes his third denial, he swears an oath. And you only swear an oath if you're swearing with God as your witness. As so, witness, you know, yes. And he mm. says, I swear by God, I don't know who, I don't know God. You know, I, I don't know the man oh. you're talking about, you know? So, um, so talk about um, being under intense pressure with your faith. It's, it's tested and you fail and it happens. Um, <laughs> But the great hope of Mark's gospel, because it, I, I have mentioned before that it ends abruptly with the, the women finding out who, you know, finding out that Jesus is gone, he's been resurrected and being, and and being told, go tell the others. And it says, and they told no one, full stop. Uh, and then, of course, historically that people have added the rest of the story as well. Um, however, um, there's hope because, uh, and, and I didn't pick this up, and this is great. At the Last Supper, Jesus uh, says, you know, or, at the, or in the garden. Okay, I've got my details mixed up. But anyway, mm-hmm. but Jesus uh, mm-hmm. talks about how after everything's over, he will meet them again in Galilee. Mm-hmm. So actually, even though people run away and Peter is never wow. reconciled in Mark's gospel to Jesus, it says uh, that Jesus will meet them again. So mm-hmm. there, exactly. there's hope. Even when we get to the worst that we can possibly be, if we fail and deny our faith, that um, it doesn't mean it's over. Jesus is still waiting for us in Galilee. That's symbolic, you know, but, mm-hmm. uh, but, mm-hmm. but there it is for us. So it, in terms of Advent, um, there it is. It's our, it's our journey towards Jesus, uh, you know, the Christ child who came in the flesh, you know, shared our human experience, um, loved us by becoming one of us, you know, God made man in the flesh. Right, definitely. Yeah. Um, how intimate God is with his people, how much he cares about us, how personal our relationship with God really is. It's, um, it's exactly. not, not distant. It's not far away. And We're so Advent, away. yeah, Advent is our rediscovery of this. I think it, it's so many things, Advent. It, it, it's, it's got cosmological implications in terms of, you know, Christ breaking through human reality and human history and, you know, changing the course of the world and the court, you know, and, uh, you know, and uh, vanishing the forces of evil through his healing miracles and all, the, all that kind of stuff going on. And so while it's big and cosmological, it's also intensely personal as well. Exactly. Um, definitely. And I, I just think that's such a beautiful thing in our faith because our faith is not a philosophy or a concept or, or an idea or an ideology. It's, no. um, it's human reality. And, it's human reality. Yeah. yeah definitely. And, and, and who knows human reality better than the God who made us? And so that's what I'm thinking about with this Advent as we go through, through the journey. Um, one thing I was, I was thinking of before this podcast is um, don't think of – because uh, there are a lot of 
great and wonderful Advent programs that come out. So people will produce booklets, you know, prayers for Advent, pray this in week one, pray this in week two, um, with scripture readings, uh, and there's online ones and physical books, and those are great. And if you have access to those and they help you, please go ahead and use them. The one thing I would just caution people about is to think of Advent itself as a program. It's not. Uh, no. Programs, you know, and, and we can fall into that. You know, I, I, I'm following the program. It's great. Advent is not a program. It's a pilgrimage. It's a journey. Um, and the destination, like we have it, spoiler alert, the destination is that fifth candle mm. that we light exactly. at, at Christmas masses. Mm. The destination is Christ um, and the advent of Christ. <clears throat> this advent is how Christ, Christ came into the world. This is, uh, this is what the, it meant when the Messiah came into the world. This is the kingdom the, um, our Messiah has ushered in, and this is what we're part of now. Now that, we've, uh, now that it's happened in our history, uh, this, is what we, this is the kingdom that we're part of. Um, and now for us, the, the hope and expectation is new. It's not the hope and expectation of a Messiah coming into the world. It's the hope and expectation of the Messiah coming back to, you know, mm. again, to restore, to restore everything. So there's a whole beautiful, you know, there, there are people a billion times smarter than me that know a whole lot more that I've, you know, I've benefited from. But um, I think Advent is a wonderful time of the year um, for us to prepare for, you know, for, again, to prepare again for our God. To, to renew ourselves again. It's also, interestingly, it's the, the new year for the church as well. So yeah. Advent, you know, the end of the church year, the church calendar. So we finish a, a week before Advent with the Feast of Christ the King. Here is your King, you know, recognize him. Exactly, um, exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. and now we, um, we prepare our hearts for, for Jesus in the same way that people were preparing themselves for their Messiah. So, you know, Jesus yeah. is obviously with us right now. You know, he's right here in our hearts, but, but we... Yeah. We redo it. We refresh. Um, you know, we hit the, not the reset button, but we hit the <laughs> renew button. Yeah. 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 We hit the restore exactly. button, you know, especially, I mean, Advent in a year like this, don't waste it in a pandemic year. Mm. Of all the years to, to hope mm. and expect a Messiah to mm. come exactly. in, into our hearts to save us from all of our, you know, uh, not even from the pandemic itself, but just from the, the, the strain it's caused, um, yeah. the mental strain, all the things it's done to us. Exactly, and exactly. what's the hope of salvation in this pandemic? It's, it's Jesus, our Messiah, mm -hmm. our, well, our God who relates to us personally. Exactly. Um, yeah. So anyway, that's my reflection. It's a couple of yeah, things. Well, yeah, that's good, um, Lindsay, as always. I didn't, yeah, I didn't want to go into here's what Advent is and, you know, here's what you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just wanted to talk about where my, mm -hmm. where my heart is, where head and my heart are at the moment. And it's probably because I wrote a big essay as well. Probably <laughs> yeah. no, it's good. We get to hear yeah. the fruits of all your writing. So great. Yeah. Cool. So there's my Advent rant. <laughs> um, Advent rant. <laughs> yeah. Now I, I'll put you both on the spot. Um, mm -hmm. But just any any thoughts or reflections on on Advent from either of you? Where um, what what you're thinking? Just just your general impressions about what your what your journey of Advent is going to be like. What you're hoping it will be for you, Caroline? Any any thoughts? Yeah. Well. Okay. So um, I always like reflect on my family. And, um, yeah. you know, obviously as I'm a mother of two small children and Frankie loves Christmas, my eldest, and, um, he's always about the advent calendar <laughs> and yes. he kind of taught me a lesson, I have to say, because I'm like, oh yeah, we'll go get advent calendars. You can choose which one you want. And I, here I am thinking, oh, he probably just want with chocolate or Lego every day or something. Uh, goes, uh, good choice. Uh, good choice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you get a chocolate every day. Which they like, but you know, he goes to me, Mum, I think we can do um we we maybe we can find a calendar, an advent calendar where um it's got heart values in it. Now his the heart values Ooh. is something they teach them at school. It's nice. like kindness and empathy and you know, there's yeah. a few oh, other wow. really nice things that they try and instill That's in the kids, awesome. which is yeah, really beautiful. Yeah. And it turns out beautiful kids because they all love that kind of thing, yeah. you know, they really take to it and they learn exactly. from it. Um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, wow, um, how's that for teaching me something? Here I am thinking that, you know, chocolate every day or whatever. And he's like, no, I want to do, I want a calendar that you, has, you know, the heart values and you do something nice for someone every day. So you, wow. you open it and it says, you know, like maybe help your mum today do this or something. And I was cool. like, wow, you know what? We can probably make something like that because I doubt very highly that they sell something like that in <laughs> yeah. the shops. I'm not true, sure true, how true. well it would sell if it doesn't have like <laughs> a chocolate in it or a Lego yeah. or a bottle of 
alcohol, some, you know, there's all sort sorts of, of <laughs> like cups wait, of wait tea. a minute, a calendar <laughs> where I have to do things? Yeah, yeah it's like, where well, I have to I, give? Wow. it's not something for yeah. me. I have to yeah. give something to someone else. Mm-hmm. And yeah, well, I like that. that's, that's a beautiful concept. So, yeah. Um, I will get them a traditional one, but I think we'll also go ahead That's and make great. his Heart Values Advent yeah. calendar and we'll, um, you know, then then we can all reflect together. We can open it together and we can yeah. do something nice for each other. Why we not? can, you know, even just the exercise of coming up with the thing to do, the like things, the activity yeah. or the thought or whatever. I think, um, you know, it's really good. So, yeah, I was taught something by my eight-year-old. Oh, wow. <laughs> Caroline is, has definitely had to post really that beautiful. on Facebook, darling. That yeah, is, yeah. You had to put it on Facebook. For, well, if you, if you want to, you can do it for every day. Yeah. But for everyone else in the know, what's going on and yeah. with that, oh, this is so awesome. It would be Jeez. Cool. Wow. Yeah. I'm yeah, just blown. Yeah. I'm blown. <clears throat> yeah, no, yeah, I know. I my mind was blown yeah. too. Wow. Like, he's a real thinker, Frankie, and, and he just comes out with these things that surprise me. You know, it's like, wow, okay. Awesome. <laughs> it's always humbling, awesome. isn't it, when lessons yeah. come from our kids wow. or from, from any yeah. child, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. That's yeah. far superior than I could have thought of. Yeah. <laughs> you know, myself, yeah. oh. here I am being really simplistic about it, and he's like, yeah. you know, just, yeah, like you said, blown me away. So Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Amazing. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Although, I mean, I'm still going to shout out for um, Lego Star Wars. <laughs> the still, yeah, that's a given, really. really. Cool. Is yeah. it part of a yeah. marketing? There better, be, better be a Baby Yoda one in this in this year's version. Oh, but yeah. oh, oh would that be? no, yeah. that's going to – oh, okay. Yeah. Ooh, thanks, thanks Caroline. Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna Caroline, <laughs> yeah, that's a beautiful idea. Good, yeah, good on you, Frankie. That's that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Lino, Advent, any any thoughts? What, where, where are you up to in, in thinking about Advent? Well, especially um, the birth of Jesus. Mm. and um, But like I was telling you guys, I'm, I'm not going to go negative or – I have a big rant about it, but so far after this pandemic, the only thing I've been seeing on TV is, how can I say it? The secular world is saturating us with everything about Santa Claus. Yeah. Buy this. Shopping. Buy that. <laughs> Shopping. Yeah. Of course, of course, it's it is uh, for us Black Friday. Yeah, no, be a no, week ago. Was week ago, when the podcast comes out, yeah, yeah, mm. exactly. And then we got something called Cyber Monday, which is all the <laughs> oh, I forgot tech about tech. that. Okay, good. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Yeah. No, all good, all good. Yeah, yeah it's just the it's just only thing. It was the only thing I was seeing on the TV and on the radio. It's all thinking about was it about Santa, and I know it's all about hope and everything, but mm. it was nothing about Jesus mm. um, and the birth yeah. of Jesus coming. And I don't know, it, it's just, I was, I don't know what I'm saying, was, I was just, just so much of it. And it, and I was just, oh my, I might as well sound, sound like an old, old person, but every time something comes up and I tell Bernie, and Bernie goes, babe, that's, that's just a normal thing for, for TV and everything. I go, yeah, that's true. Nothing about Jesus and everything. But yeah, it's just, Advent for me is about the coming of Christ. Um, it's not coming of Christ, Um, the birth of Christ coming of yeah, Christ. Yeah. It's great. And um. And it's one of the ones besides um, Lent that I'm really uh, uh, are looking forward to. And also, um, yeah, a new thing I don't oh, – I'm going to go personal about this, but the only thing I don't like about Christmas is uh, – how can I say it? <laughs> I'm trying to find things for people. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? And I shopping. Think, <laughs> exactly. You gotta, I need to get this for your mum, for your dad, yeah, for your yeah. brother. Yeah. For the this person and that person and and as 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 I as I personally as I do this, I just think um how am I gonna say it? I just feel that I'm being a materialistic person. Sure. As I'm thinking, I'm giving this person this you know, you know an, an iPhone, which I would love to have anyway. <laughs> um, you know, I, I want, yeah, a watch or anything like that. It's just saying here, Merry Christmas, and. And I just, I don't know, I want to give something that it gives the idea of the birth of Christ. Mm. Sure. You know, happy, Merry Christmas, Happy Birthday. Yeah. Uh, well, let's say Happy Birthday to Christ and find our way of understanding that, for, especially for us Catholics, mm. you know, don't get too saturated and too consumed of, <laughs> of consumerism. <laughs> yeah. you, know, yeah. you know what I mean? That's just good. Tr- try to get to your mind and prayer that, and, you know, um, this is his birthday is coming soon, and put that in front before everything else, because that's what I felt I've been feeling for every year is like mm-hmm. materialistic. Buy this, buy that yeah, before it's true. before Jesus comes in. You know, it's true. And especially with this pandemic gone, oh yeah, we've it's all gone. 
um, who do we thank? Of course, we thank all the workers and and everyone who's yeah. who's still studying. Not studying. Um, trying to find the what is it, Caroline? The um, vaccine, 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 yeah, yeah. and yeah. everything. You know, but it's also thank thanking God and Jesus for keeping us all together mm. and keeping us all contacted and keeping us strong. You mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. and like it, all of us are saying that without Him, you know, I, I don't know all the other people who who would. We're not um, who believe in God and everything like that, but for us, uh, we would just be um, lost in the sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. And but yeah. with Jesus in the front, yeah, it's just, oh yeah. You know, but uh, I don't think yeah. Yeah, um, Lino, it's interesting because I, I realized, and maybe this is the better timing, but I realized mm. that um, I'd actually set up a Pope Francis article to talk about as part of my yeah. my Advent rant mm. or my my reflection, I should say. <laughs> um, and uh, and I forgot to do it completely as I got excited mm. about what I was talking about. Sorry. But I think Ooh. you've just you've summarized it. I'll put this um yeah, this link yeah. in the show notes. But yeah. <clears throat> excuse me, um, Pope Francis. Um, there's a new book, an interview with um, I think Austin Ivory is the name of the author. I think it is. Um, and uh, he's interviewed Pope Francis about hope. I hope I got that right. <laughs> Sorry, it's really irony of what I just said. Anyway, but um, <laughs> but uh, he. But Pope Francis, in this, uh, the, an excerpt of it was uh, was adapted for the New York Times and put in as as an opinion piece. Um, and uh, he said a lot of things. It's beautiful, and he was talking about not forgetting people, just like you've talked about. And he said, exactly. uh, "We need to be careful. We've we've got the pandemic, but there are other pandemics that we can't see, like exactly. the pandemic of yeah. indifference, the yes. pandemic of of not caring about other people, um, mm. the pandemic exactly. of ignoring the homeless." The pandemic mm. of ignoring the sick. Uh, there's all sick. these other ones. Um, that, that he said, and you can't wear a mask for those. There are other ways that we need to try yeah. to inoculate ourselves against it. So, Lena, exactly. I think you've, I think you've summed that up really well. So, I won't, I won't say more. But um, I think that well, I think the article that or the piece is actually worth reading. Um, it's his. Mm-hmm. It's you know, it, it, this piece really is, I guess, his outreach to the secular world that you just mentioned. Uh, and I exactly. think it's, um, I think it's worth, um, worth a read. So we'll, we'll share that as well. Yeah, thank well, you for that, Lena. That, that's really good. Um, I've been too much of a rat, guys. I don't want to get too negative. Right. No, no, no. no. no <laughs> and if anyone else wants to send us their rant, we'll read it. Go ahead. Email us. <laughs> yes, there. we love a rant. Catholics of Oz at sqpn.com. Go ahead. Send it. Yeah. Slash rant. <laughs> rant away. Make it a nice rant, but just put a positive thing at the end. Yeah, yeah. we'll read it. Yes, yeah. please. Just yeah. tie it up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just wanted to share one more little thing. It's a, uh, I'm going to review this item, but I'm going to review it in 10 seconds because I haven't, I've, I've only got it uh, yesterday. <laughs> um, and only you guys can see it because we haven't got a camera for our audience, but. Uh, I so finally, cool. after a, and I, Carol, wow. I, actually, I think I actually mentioned this in our episode with Father Calloway that I was waiting for my uh, word yes, on fire Bible to, and that yeah. was episode 40 something in the early forties. So it's been yeah. a while. Early forties. Um, yes. Hey, but it my, came in, man. Yeah. Awesome. But my uh, word on fire Bible has uh, finally arrived. Very so nice looking. It's, it uh, is, yeah, it's man. beautiful. I got the hardcover because the, um, the leather one's probably just a little bit out of my price range. But, oh, yeah. um, but the nice. Bible is the I would have got the soft cover if I had to. But, um, yeah. uh, <laughs> but uh, the thing is, I want to stick it on a bookshelf and make sure it's protected. So I thought a hardcover would be a good, mm-hmm. a good yeah, um, compromise for that. Yeah, probably Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of Lord of the Rings. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's got yeah. the spine. It almost is kind of Lord of the Rings. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Put him next to your Lord of the Rings that's book. Right. It's very... Yeah. The two towers, I mean, illustration? the Gospels. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, the four Gospels. That's awesome. Yeah, but yeah. I've, uh, I, I've only read um, the introductions uh, and just mm-hmm. had a look at the format. So, so you kind what, of know what the Bible's about now. Yeah, I've, I mean, <laughs> look, spoiler alert, <laughs> I know how it ends, all right? But, you know, <laughs> um, but the thing is, uh, I was reading it, and the, the intention of the Word on Fire Bible is really to help people to rediscover who is God, who is Jesus. Uh, you know, and, and by extension, I'm adding this, but who is Jesus that reveals God to us? Because if we want to know who God is, I've sort of just ranting about Jesus before, you know, for Advent. But if we want to know who God is, we we find out through uh, His Son, through Jesus. You know, who is God, who is part of the Trinity, but is the is the human expression of God for us to understand Him. And so uh, this Bible um, it ha- kind of has that intention. Um, it mentions in in Bishop Barron's opening letter that uh, people, you know, it's talking about the United States, but the the number of people who don't believe in God anymore is slowly on the rise. Uh, and the Bible itself is becoming a very difficult book for people in our modern audience with modern thinking to understand. It's a very, some of it mm-hmm. is a very foreign concept. So what he's tried to do, and I think from the looks of it, it, it looks like it can, it can do the job. He's tried to 
produce a Bible that will uh, that will reach out to people through beauty, um, through mm. things that they can relate to. So uh, it's um, essentially this one. This version is just the four Gospels. It's just Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. There'll be um, there'll be more um, coming out later with um, you know with the prophets, the law, the Pentateuch, the letters. Um, I don't know if the Book of Revelation will be its own thing or if it will be part of the the letters in the New Testament. I'm not sure. Um, but either way, he, he's sort of releasing sections, and uh, there's commentary all the way throughout. So you don't just read a, a, a book like you know a gospel from start to end. It's interrupted deliberately by different commentary. Um, key sections are highlighted. So I, I was having a look at one, you know, the Sermon on the Mount. There's like a two or three page explanation of the Sermon on the Mount uh, after oh. you read it. Um, it's injected oh. with art, all kinds of art, and not just look at this picture. You know, here's a picture of the Good Samaritan or whatever. Um, the key features are highlighted and explained. How does this art explain nice. the, the yeah. parable or the story or, or the, the moment? And, um, and what I actually love is there's art all the way throughout that's explained. And art has this power of being able to take concepts that we can't wrap our heads around and make it more understandable in a very Standable. visual yeah, kind of way. And, yeah. uh, and he's done that well. So it's got his commentary. It's got commentary from a couple of others. Uh, he's taken commentary from some of the early church fathers as well. So there's, uh, so I, I love the format of it, the way it's set up. You don't have like a whole page of scripture. You'll have maybe half a page of scripture and then some explanation for it. Explanation. So yeah, yeah it's oh, really wow. well thought out. And um, yep. yeah, I'm looking forward to, I, I do plan to just digest it from start to end over, over the coming uh, weeks and months. So uh, one thing I've wanted to do for a while is actually renew my understanding of the gospels and and have a good read of it. So I think this is a great entry point into into the Gospels. He he does mention that he was given a Bible when he was thirteen, and you know, and so he thought, great, I can't wait to read this. And he said he got uh, at a young as he, at a young age, he got to about chapter thirteen of Genesis, and he was he had enough. Um, and then he asked someone, they said, oh no no, start with the Gospels. And he said he got you know he got halfway through the Gospel of Matthew, and he had enough. You know, he couldn't do it. Um, it's because there was no one to break open the word for him to help break him understand the, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so exactly, this is exactly. yeah, this is a Bible that's designed to break open the word um, and help us understand it. Um, he that's describes great. it in his videos. He says it's a cathedral in print, and I I can see why now. Wow, that's nice. Um, yeah. So just from my my one day with it that I had yesterday. Uh, and when I say one day, I sat down with it for an hour and a bit, <laughs> but hey. I'm I'm already thoroughly impressed, and I, I I can already recommend it. I can't wait to to read more of it myself. I'll say more about it in future episodes when I've had a go at reading it. But um, I'm cool. I'm really excited about exploring the Gospels through through this particular version of it. Nice man. There we go. So um, wow. full full disclosure and transparency to our listeners. Our show notes. Uh, I usually do a much better job with show notes, and I put links. Um, <laughs> I was a bit of a rush this morning. It's Caroline's turn to talk, to, to, to talk about Ooh. science. And she's got a space topic. So the line I've written here is lots of spacey stuff from Caroline. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so, Caroline, <laughs> give us some updates on what's been happening. There's some really exciting stuff in the, in the area of space. So what's been happening in space exploration? Yeah, there's some pretty cool missions going around as always. But today I want to highlight the Hayabusa 2 mission from JAXA, which is the Japanese aerospace Aerospace Exploration Agency. Um, so um, the reason I want to talk about it is because it's um, some cool events are happening around it at the moment, and I will go through that. So basically, um, it's an asteroid sample return mission, which I love those ones because it's actually you know going somewhere and then returning a sample returning from where they've been to Earth also, yeah. from the outer yeah. reaches of the, um, I was going to say the galaxy, but it's actually just the solar system. Um, so um, this one was launched in 2014, December, and wow. it's gone to um, explore and study and sample the asteroid Ry- Ryugu. and. Yep. Um, it's gone, uh, it arrived there on June 27th in 2018, where it did its surveying and, um, it took some samples. So basically it's a bit like the OSIRIS-REx mission we talked about a few, uh, episodes ago where yes, they, yep. um, so they, um, touched, sort of touched the asteroid this time they shot a projectile instead of a burst of uh-huh. gas. This one they just actually shot a projectile out, um, stirred up 
the the dust and whatever was on there and took the sample. Um, but I wanted to. So they to fired talk- at an asteroid. They 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 did. Well, yeah. cool. is that the first time in human history that's happened, or? Well, they've done Have it. Have they done it before? They, this is like their number two mission. They've actually done another oh, one. So you're before right. this, yes, in yeah. 2000, yeah. So yeah. yes, they've done it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> the same people did it already. Yeah. <laughs> they've been shooting asteroids before. It's not their first time. Yeah, yeah. but it's gotcha. not like a massive shot yeah. to destroy the asteroid. It's yeah. like a tiny pellet. Okay, it's like <laughs> so it's not like shooting at an asteroid. I mean, that right, would be so cool. what you're saying is we haven't declared war on an asteroid. Is what no. you're saying? No, and it's no, not space goodness. invaders or anything like that. Or whatever <laughs> those guys. Yes, yeah, yeah, those yeah. asteroid. What's that one? We anyway. I'll go off yeah. the track if I talk about that. So um, <laughs> retro. <laughs> so um, the Hayabusa two mission is actually really interesting. I'd love to just say let you know about the payload that was on it on this um, particular vehicle. So um, it has several sensors. So it's got a thermal infrared camera, a navigation camera, near infrared, laser ranger finder, a LIDAR, which is awesome, Uh, a sampling device, small carry-on impactor, not a missile, um, (laughs) deployable (laughs) camera, and actually I... Don't know why, but I missed this bit. It carried four little rovers on it. Oh. Okay. Yes. So um, so not only did it go and take a sample, it actually put four little rovers on. And these were from various little, um, uh, like, universities and things around the place. So, the, and, But they were very small vehicles, like tiny little things. Like um, a remote control almost. car. Kind remote of control oh, car. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, just really Sweet. small. You know um, what? Sorry to interrupt. I reckon yeah, there's like it. these four oh, these wow. four guys that just wanted to have like a little RC car race on an asteroid. Yes. <laughs> just four of them. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh my yes. I didn't know they had that, to be honest, though. I actually never this is the first I time I'm hearing about this. I've I've read about the mission. I totally missed this. So anyway, oh, wow. so that's why I yeah. wanted to talk about it. It's a very interesting mission. Yes. So um they have all those sensors on basically for imaging and analyzing um, the composition of the surface and temperature before they actually got down to Mm. the asteroid itself. But then it deployed these little rovers. So um, there was Minerva 2, which they deployed, and it actually released two other little rovers. It's kind what? of really cool. Yeah. What? So this is like Rover... the Babushka dolls of Rovers. Yes, it's like that. <laughs> oh my gosh! It's like that. And this is amazing. It was pretty cool. So um, September wow. 2018, they released them, and um, this was Rover. So it's Minerva two number one. So and that contained Rover one A, Rover one B. Mm. They were both um, like little cylindrical shaped rovers. About these are tiny, seven centimeters tall and eighteen centimeters in diameter. Wow, it's a matchbox um, car. That- that's and, a, yeah. And, so, and, and they kind of because hopped that, in the low gravity. Yeah, <laughs> yes, like later. a stapler. Yeah. Right, yes. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's tiny. Um, wow. But they actually had ca- cameras and thermometers on there. So they had tiny little sensors and, and um, wow. like equipment. There's measuring equipment, analyzing equipment on there. Um, the 1A um, operated for 113 asteroid days and mm. 1B for 10. And um, they took video, videos and photos of the asteroid surface as well as, you know, temperature measurements and things like that. So pretty cool. Is, it, is um, this available? Well, I, I have to check this out. Uh, it- yeah, actually, um, Wikipedia has some photos and things. And oh. you can go and, you know, obviously go and look it up. There's the JAXA website you can go to as I, well. So there's, I there's didn't all- know this. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, no, it's really cool. And I saw the said, photos. It's like, wow, it's it's yeah. cool. It's really First cool. First, it's a probe that releases rovers, and then it's yeah. a rover that releases little rovers. Yes. This is like every anime cartoon I've ever seen, yes, isn't but, it? Like all these little machinery. Just hold on, because you know, I'm yeah. not finished. Yeah, no, I'm so it's, impressed. It's, I'm so it's, impressed. It's, yeah, no, it's really cool. Um, it's a very cool mission, I have to yeah. say. Um, and then there's Minerva 2 number 2, which held rover number 2, which was an octagonal prism shape. 15 centimetres by 16 centimetres. It contained a thermometer, two cameras, an accelerometer, UV LEDs, uh, to de- and these were to detect the floating particles, which is... Sounds like an iPhone. You know, it's like yeah. an iPhone. The latest one has a LiDAR <laughs> on it. I had no idea. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, unfortunately, this one did fail before it got to the surface, but it still oh. took some measurements um, before it its demise impacting on the asteroid. Oh, the asteroid. Yeah. Um, then they had a mascot um, rover, 
and they released that one October 2018. And um, that was a, um, a collaboration between German Aerospace Agency and the French Space Agency. This is a little bit bigger, by 29 centimetres by 27. Mm -hmm. It contained an infrared camera, spectrometer, magnetometer, radiometer and camera. And um, I was reading that this mission was um, so good that they um, wrote some papers about it. They were able oh. to find some really good information oh. um, about the composition of the asteroid. They found it's not really that dense, you know, just mm -hmm. some um, really good information. So um, that was a very successful um, little mission. So there's like mission with side missions on it. Yeah. So it's very yeah, cool. It's, Lino, it's like an RP you, yeah, it's about you to say, say it. Yeah, go on, yeah. you say it, you say it. It's like an RPG game. Yeah, we know all about side quests. There you go. Caroline doesn't know about like quests as well. Yes. Like, what's it good? Yeah. Caroline, you had the boys on this podcast at side quests. There you go. I suddenly became a lot cooler. Yeah. Slaying dragons on an asteroid. I'm finally cool. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. So, so yeah, those. I just wanted to mention those as well, but. As I said, there's more. So, um, so aside from that, Hayabusa 2 took a sample by um, firing projectile into the surface, took the sample, um, and so um, it, it um, where am I going? It, it's going to um, arrive back at Earth. So after it took the sample, it's come back to Earth, and it's going to be arriving here in December. And um, actually in Australia, in yes. uh, Woomera, Woomera, at the yes. Woomera yep. test range. So it's going to parachute down. Now, Hayabusa itself is going to stay as, as, in mission. So the actual, cap, the actual um, craft itself is not going to be entering the atmosphere. It's just mm. going to release a little capsule. It's going to come through the atmosphere. It's going to have a little parachute and the sample <laughs> itself only is going to um, land. So that oh, um, JAXA wow. then, they've already got um, some people from Japan here in Australia. Um, they've been, um, you know, at the site and everything and preparing for it to land. And, um, yes, yeah, so December, early December, we will um, have news on Australian, you know, on the Australian yeah. news. I love the Australian that. connection. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's pretty cool. Um, yep. But that, that's not all. So <laughs> after releasing the capsule, the Hayabusa will return to its exploration mission. It's going to do more things. So more th this wow. is wow. like I was thinking to myself, what's cooler than a booster returning from a rocket? back yes. to Earth, a mission that has many missions on the site, and it's like an exploration mission going around our solar system. Oh okay, so, whoever designed this plays RPGs, Lena. I'm, I'm cool. Uh, I, I, yeah. must be, I, I, and yeah. I'm sorry, guys. Look, it, 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 who made this? Who made this? Can it was like the Japanese. Japanese, yeah. yeah that, it's way respect. cool. Come yes. on, guys. So it. like 10 I'm so years impressed. They, they, of all they, of all. they yeah. have this amazing capacity to really like, think to, outside yeah. the box you and just get the most out of it. Yeah, so... So I've got to go a bit of a side quest, but did you see on the news yesterday about a robot in Japan for the COVID who goes up to people and say you have to be a part, you have to you have to wear a mask. Oh, really? Oh, An oh, actual really? robot, they'll come That's up to funny. you and tell you that. I'm sorry, this is, that was just a side quest. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. OMG, if this yeah. happened in Australia, <laughs> all of us would be freaked out. Yeah. Was like, but it, it, I'm sorry. This, Nobody this, would. Yeah, but it's a yeah, different that, society. That's yeah. good. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Oh, no, true, true. I'm sorry, but Jap no, Japanese if it happened in technology, they yeah. go like 10 years or 20 years yeah. ahead of everyone else. Totally are. Yeah. Yeah. If it happened yeah. in Australia, someone would say, that robot is taking my rights. <laughs> <laughs> and they oh, just get a cricket yeah. back. Oh, my cricket goodness back to it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Sorry this is not a political <laughs> podcast. Sorry, keep going. No, it's not. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, after the capsule lands, Hybus is going to fly off again. It oh, wow. has another mission to meet up with an, an asteroid in 2031. And it's Whoa. a much smaller asteroid this time. It's only 30 meters across. Um, it's called uh, 1998 KY26. And apparently has it's it's a very fast spinning asteroid. Um, oh, wow. 
You know, but I, I uh, watched a little video of the research scientists and they were saying things like they'd really like to know, you know, why do n small asteroids not fall apart? Because there's not mm -hmm. really much of them. Um, mm -hmm. And to learn more about the characteristics of asteroids in terms of planetary defense. So like if you've yep. got a big asteroid coming, do we need to worry about it? Is it really dense? You know, is it something that's really going to make an impact on the Earth? You know, will it break mm -hmm. up before it, you know, any, all of that kind of thing? Yeah, so yeah, so yeah. it's really interesting. Mm -hmm interesting um so Hayabusa still has one target marker so like where they find where to like um uh get you know procure the sample and um a projectile so it's got another set on there ready to go for this mm -hmm. asteroid and um so the the challenges with this is that because it has a fast rotation and it's very small Ryugu was much larger than um, this then, um, yeah. and so it's going to be a challenge for them to actually Very. get the target and fire mm. the projectile and get Control. the sample which exactly. you know they're up for the challenge Ooh. obviously so yeah, it's challenge be accepted. Yeah. Ch yeah so good. it's got 11 years yeah, yeah. but in the meantime on the way <laughs> okay because <laughs> it's Wow, uh, look, I, I was I had to talk about it because I I just thought it's amazing. So they've got some other little more side missions, yeah. uh, you know, to go. So um, <laughs> we've got yes. a side quest. Um, so do, they, do these side quests have difficulty ratings as well? Like, well, well? I reckon they should because some of these are pretty, you know, challenging. I think challenging. So, I was about to say. For example, they want to measure zodiacal light. From the dis as the distance from the sun changes. Now, zodiacal light, I actually had to yep. look it up, was, um, you know, That's on the right. horizon very early morning and the first peep of light comes through from the sun. So you just start yeah, to see awesome. the very light yeah. diffuse touches of the sun coming through that's the that's the zodiacal light cool. so they want to measure that in in um space you know as they're orbiting the sun so they're wow. going to be quite far out at things and they'll, they want to measure that and they want to measure the distribution of dust in the planetary space which that's a good mission i reckon you know how dusty are we out there like yeah, has wow. the dust settled yeah. is it has it been like pulled in in by gravity onto you know asteroids and planets and moons and whatever um good job it's, that's a pretty cool, pretty cool mission. Um, and also this one, well, um, to observe the transit of exoplanets as they pass in front of their stars. So, like, usually we do that with telescopes here on Earth and exactly. yeah, out in space as well. So measuring, you know, watching for the dips in light as the planet passes through, you know, past the star. So, I mean, wow, why, why do just, like, a little thing, you know, when you can do... Lots of big things. Lots of big things. <laughs> and wow. um, the last yeah. thing too, they want to fly past another asteroid called 2001 CC21 and they want to try and image it. Now, they said they may not have image. the right cam wow. cameras because mm. they don't have a telephoto on there, but they're mm. going to try mm. and image that as well as they yeah. pass. So, yeah. um, so you know... Um, it's a it's an action packed little little craft. It's got a lot of um, goodness me it's analyzers impressive. and uh, instruments on there, and um, it's just yeah. gonna. They, I think they're just maximizing what they can yeah, do while do while it's this. going. So yeah. wow, uh, you know. And by the way, China is just going to the moon to collect some rock samples, yes. and you know, yeah, and they want to bring it back in December. We'll have by the time we yeah. uh, by the time oh. this comes out, we'll have launched Starship and yes. landed it or crashed it into the grounds. You know, yeah, <laughs> and There's those so are. Amazing. Amazing, but this mission is like, I I didn't, yeah, yeah, really, so yeah, yeah, no, wow, 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 that's really cool. And by the way, yeah, December is when China want to bring back their um sample, so yep. that's really cool. Um, and that one's cool too because it's like an Apollo like mission on a small scale yes. because yes. they're going to have an orbiter, they're going to have a little lander that goes out, goes cool. down to the moon, collects sample, then goes back up to the orbiter and I then flies yep. to Earth. And yep. um, wow, yeah, that's cool. And they don't normally um, live stream their launches, but they live no. stream this one. So I'm hoping yes. we'll see a lot more um, information about the progress of this mission. It's a yeah. good one to follow. I yeah. read that I think they're working with ESA, Europe European Excellent. Uh, Excellent. Space Agency. So I guess it will be a little bit more open because of good. that. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's about you know, the, and the sample that they're going to use is going to be available for research. So. Um, yeah. yeah, no, that's good to see that collaboration. 
Yes. And um, yeah, I am super excited to see that Starship fly, Lindsay. Yeah. And you know, I just um, I'll be working, but I will be streaming it on YouTube while I work because I'm still at home. So awesome. yeah, I don't care. I don't care where I am. If I'm working, <laughs> yeah. if I'm teaching, the kids yeah. are going to be watching it with me. If it's uh, if it's yeah. three o'clock in it's the morning, just, I'll be I'll yeah, be up for it. Yeah, fly. there's no way I, I mean, it literally that. does yeah. look like it is a tin can. Yeah, tin, <laughs> can. tin can with, with a very so, sophisticated tin can. Yeah. yeah, I mean, seeing the static fire was exciting enough, but seeing it lift and and do a oh my yeah. Gosh. I'm just. It's yeah. gonna be yeah. Woo. It's gonna be so something. great time to live with all these exciting <laughs> developments. Yeah. So, you know, it's kind of cool. Yeah. Wow. Do you think Sweet. humans in a hundred years from now, during the next pandemic, are going to think they got excited about a tin can? We've got starships everywhere. <laughs> so, well, yeah. I think so because, like, you no. Know, well, I'm still excited about the first, like the the first landing on the moon. I agreed, still, agreed. I still mm-hmm. um, try, kind of think about, wow, how did they actually manage to do it with no, all yeah, the technical difficulties yes. and all of that? And, you yes, know, did, yeah. and agreed. So, like, you know, I don't think that the future humans are going to think that we're just so like backwards yeah. or anything like that. I think they're just going <laughs> to admire all the, um, the hard work that's gone into it to get yeah. to where they are. We are. Then, Very true. Know, like yeah, we do, say, I think, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. that they will, they will sit back and reflect and they'll say, it's been a long road getting from there to here. Oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah. Me. Dad joke. Only, <laughs> only Star Trek <laughs> fans will know what I'm talking Star Trek about. Star Trek world, if I'm <laughs> fans will know that. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's all I'm going to cool. say. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Uh, thanks for that. That's an awesome update. I love Yeah, we, We're all wow. in love with space news and especially just the way it teaches us. I was talking about, you know, God on a cosmological level. We've, we haven't even scratched the surface, to be honest, mm. with, um, with everything. It's amazing. All right, so let's wrap it up there for today. So we want to thank you all so much for joining us for episode 46 of The Catholics of Oz. I hope you feel a bit more spiritually enthused and even a bit more educated after what <laughs> we've been talking about today. Space enthused as well. Yeah, That's true. a whole That's lot, true. yes. Um, and as always, we'd like to thank our patrons who make it possible for the Catholics of Oz to exist and all the other shows on the StarQuest network. And today, we would really love to thank Vincent D, Edward B, Paul L, Enabong A, and Ryan O. Through your generous donations, the donations of all the patrons um, at sqpn.com slash give, they make it possible for the Catholics of Oz and all the other shows at StarQuest to continue. You can join them by visiting sqpn.com slash give. And please also throw in a prayer for all of us as well. That also makes um, a massive difference. So we would appreciate your prayers. Uh, but also, we would love to know what you thought about today's show. So you can send us feedback by visiting sqpn.com slash oz, where you can find any show notes for today's episode. And don't forget to visit the SQPN Facebook, uh, Facebook page. Just drop in and say hello facebook.com slash starquest media and of course you are very very welcome and warmly invited to join the catholics of oz facebook page as well at facebook.com slash catholics of oz remember oz is spelt o-z z for anyone else who's not sure what a z is yeah 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 actually yes any american listeners i want to know what the equivalent of a yeah. sausage sizzle is so it's just yes, a beef please. sausage in a piece of bread with sauce on top or ketchup i guess um and some and some light onion so let it, not raw onion obviously it's been you know, no no they're gonna yeah. be nice and yeah. grilled and um yeah grilled onion yeah so charcoal not charcoal what do you call caramelized Whoa, onion caramel- yeah, caramelized caramelized. Onion. yeah. Well, yeah. Know. the sausage yeah. can be charcoal that's okay it's quite traditional <laughs> yes in <laughs> fact overcooked is probably a yeah it's a tradition that is yeah. the right way to cook yeah. it yes and when the sausage Ooh. goes in the bread, corner to corner, please. Corner, not, not, please. not this not in, the in the middle nonsense. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, don't fold, fold it long ways. No, no, no. No, no, no. no, no, no. no, no. no. Yeah, we're very, we're very particular in Australia about our sausage sizzles. <laughs> yeah. in, in fact, people may not know um, that when we have elections, the sausage sizzle comes back. And they actually call it the democracy Always. sausage. That's a thing yeah. that's been going mm-hmm. on for, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah it's, we take it very seriously. So 100%. Don't, don't mock it. More don't than the it. actual election itself. If it that's right. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yep. Absolutely. Let's All right. not go into elections. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Caroline, yet. thank you so much for being on today's episode <laughs> and for everything you shared. Thank you, guys. It's fun as always. Yeah. And Lino, so great to have you back. Thanks for being on episode 46 of The Catholics of Oz. Thank you very much, guys. You take care and God bless everyone. God bless. Ooh, yeah. And once again, I'm Lindsay Sands. And thank you so much for listening to episode 46 of The Catholics of Oz on StarQuest. Quest.